Hello everybody and welcome to Ian's Bricks, I'm Ian and today I'm going to have a roundup of the, uh, of the recent uh, Milton Keynes Brick Festival that I attended. Um, I've been to about four of these uh, Brick Festivals now, uh, a few of them have been in Milton Keynes uh, and I have to say they're very very good events in general. Uh, what I will say about the Brick Festival people is they do advertise their events really really well, they get a lot of people through the door which is a sort of a Lego reseller like myself is, is what you want, you want a lot of people to be coming in, have a look at what you've got and I have to say it was a very very successful event for me um, I, uh, I got a lot of people interested in my sets buying them which was really really good um, so I'll talk about the venue itself so they actually changed venues um, they had used a, a site called the Ridgeway Centre in the past uh, which was okay they had sort of one big hall and a couple of other smaller rooms um, I always struggle to get a telephone reception in there uh, especially when I'm doing my uh, my credit card um, transaction which which could have was 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 difficult for me at the time. So uh, when I heard they were doing a new venue, and this time they used a, a venue called Planet Ice, which is basically an ice rink um, in Milton Keynes, uh, much closer to the centre of Milton Keynes, although still quite easy to get to. Um, the only slight downside with the venue from a, an access point of view is uh, there was sort of no free parking for the majority of the stall holders at the event. Uh, so I did have to pay £10 for the day, but I did manage to find a car park very, very close by. It was literally a, a one minute, two minute walk from where the actual entrance to the venue was. So it wasn't actually that bad. So at least you could un unload your stuff at the front door and then you could go and find somewhere to park. So there was just that little kind of thing. There was some free parking in the um, Morrison's car park multi-storey next door, but that was limited to three hours. So fine if you were attending the event, uh, but for someone like me who was a trader, I did have to park somewhere else, which is just one of those things. Um, the size of the event or the location was huge. It really was a massive hall. So that was a real sort of positive that we had inside. There were just lots of space. I had lots of space behind me. Quite often at these things, you're sort of crammed in together and there's not a lot of space behind you. So um, from my point of view, it was, it was good that I had lots and lots of space. Uh, the tables that they were using were quite narrow. Um, they do say in their advertisements that the tables are six foot by two foot, which is, isn't, is fair fairly narrow two foot um, but these were particularly uh, narrow but again it's one of those things it means it wasn't that I wasn't able to display as much as I would have liked to I could have gone for backing tables but I didn't uh, go for backing tables at this particular event um, just because I wanted to keep the costs down the costs by the way it was 50 pounds for each seller table and I think it was an additional £20 if you had a backing table. Uh, at my last event in Bournemouth I had two front tables and one back table and that actually worked quite well so I might use that formula going forward but for this event I just had the two front tables but I still managed to work it okay. I do also bring a sort of a, a plastic stand with me which I put up and I also have a sort of small um, foldable table as well which I kind of use to put other stuff on as well. So space-wise, I had lots of space. So the venue was huge, and what was good, even though they had a lot of people in there, a lot of tables in there of different sellers and different displays and things, there was loads of space between the tables and the stalls, which was fantastic. The only slight downside, of course, um, was that it was on an ice rink, so they literally just put wooden boards down on top of the ice, um, and uh, it did make it quite cold on the floor. I did sort of find as the day went on that my feet actually got quite cold. Um, it wasn't a freezing cold day outside, it wasn't particularly warm, um, but uh, but yeah I did find it was a little bit chilly in there, chillier than normal. These, these events can actually sometimes get too hot, so maybe it wasn't a bad thing. I'd rather probably be a little bit cool than too hot because at least you can sort of put layers on and things like that if you do get a little bit chilly. Um, but there were chairs for us to sit on as well which was good um, and the venue had, uh, there were toilets in there so, so everything else was absolutely fine. Um, I was very very lucky in the fact that my table was very very near to the main entrance. I didn't ask for that. You can on a lot of these things you can say where you want to be near the entrance or near to somebody else's stall but in this particular instance I tend not to tick those things. I just take the of the draw and more often than not I'm, I'm normally fairly happy with where I am so it's not really a problem so I was literally as you sort of walked into the event uh, it was literally the first stall um, that you could see uh, which was very very good 
Um, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it, it was good. Now the only downside I think for the event for me was that I did have a problem with phone signal. It wasn't just me; everybody was complaining that well, there really wasn't a good phone signal in there. And I get that it's a, it's a steel building with a steel roof. That's always going to be a problem. Um, but when my partner asked asked the lady at reception who was dealing with the Brick Festival asked for the Wi-Fi code for us to use, and I needed that because um, my card reader that I use relies on a phone signal or a Wi-Fi signal to be able to use it properly um, and they were told or we were told that, that there wasn't one available so I sort of persevered for the first um, three hours I think it was uh, and although some of my payments went through they were very very slow the ones that did go through uh, but some of them I ended up having to take the person who was buying off me into the reception area sort of walking past everybody else which was really really busy to sort of go and stand by reception to make the card payment go through so that's not ideal now that only happened about probably five or six times so apologies to anybody that's watching this that had that problem uh, and I say a lot of other people the payments were going through but they were very very slow um, I think it was around about one o'clock I'd, I'd, I'd led this guy into the reception said oh sorry it's not working can we go to reception most people were fine with it which is fine and I had my, my, my partner Anthony to, to sort of look after the table while I was gone if you're on your own you wouldn't be able to do that um, and as I was sort of taking the transaction this guy in a suit came up and I'd seen this guy walking around this venue I didn't really know who he was uh, but he was obviously somebody that was sort of in charge of the actual ice rink um, and he said, oh, do you want the Wi-Fi code? And I said, yes, please. Um, and uh, so I took the, he, he put the, put, we selected the Wi-Fi, he put the password in. And then for the rest of the day, it was absolutely fine. It worked perfectly. Um, so my only d downside for, for Brick Festival is to, really with these venues, is if the signal isn't very good, maybe it would be a good idea for them to actually have the Wi-Fi code available for sellers. Because, you know, the people that are there to sell and they, they need, the, the Wi-Fi signal to be able to sell products. I understand that you don't want to give it out to everybody. I get that. I mean, even if there was a cost involved in that, fair enough, you know, but as sellers, we need that Wi-Fi signal. So I just find it really strange that they don't kind of test that thing out. So if anybody from Brick Festivals is watching, please just bear that in mind for future. So I know in the past I've had problems at the Ridgeway Centre in Milton Keynes as well. So um, so just sort of bear that in mind if, you, if you're in any venue to be able to maybe arrange something with the people that own the building for us to actually have the Wi-Fi code. Because at the end of the day, I was given the Wi-Fi code because obviously the guy who was running the ice rink didn't want people to in and fro in all the time into in and out of reception and probably causing more mayhem we were sort of blocking a very very narrow entrance push chairs and wheelchairs were trying to trying to get past us so it wasn't particularly ideal but so luckily it did only happen a few times for me this time and most of the time um, the payments did go through okay although it did take a little bit of time so the event itself, um, I took quite a lot of sets with me. Um, I, I've only, I'm fairly limited to how many sets I can take just because of the size of my car, but I really did cram a lot of sets in there. And um, I obviously have some poly bags, which are quite small, and I bring them in a box. But beside the poly bags, which I sort of, I'll keep those kind of separate, um, I had a total of... 97 what I call boxed Lego sets. So these are the sort of sealed Lego sets that I take and they range obviously from the massive uh, sets like the uh, the green grocer and the modular buildings to the kind of really small city sets but um, I class anything as a sort of a box set as something that's in a box rather than a, a poly bag. So I had just under 100 of those. I had uh, 97 of them. Out of all of those sets I sold 76 of those sets so that means I didn't sell 21 so that's round about 75 percent of all of the box sets that I took with me I managed to sell now all of my sets I pre-priced so they've already got prices on there one or two people do haggle there weren't that many and to be quite honest I'm quite happy a couple of people I said no to um, you know sort of early on someone was like oh, I'll have that off you and I'm like well what's your best price on that I'm sort of like well we literally just opened so that is my best price at the moment <laughs> uh, whereas later on in the in the fair if there are things left and somebody says, can I have that for that? I will weigh that up. Again, I'm always inclined to say no if they're asking is, if they're asking for too much off. And sometimes I'll say yes. It depends on the set. Um, 
It depends how many times I've taken this particular set to the actual events and things like that, uh, or whether I think it's actually worth the price that I'm asking. Um, so yeah, I'm not I'm not sort of afraid to say no to somebody if they do ask. Um, so of all of the sets that I said, all of those 76 box sets that I sold, um, the best ones are the ones I got the most money for. Um, the best one was the uh, the 10251, the Brick Bank, which is the modular building. Um, now I had this on at £420, uh, which sold at that price, um, and I originally bought that set, um, oh, probably 2016, 2017, I bought that for £130. So for me that was £290 profit. Um, I price all of my sets based on the sold prices on eBay, so before I go to these events I have a look at the sold prices, and there can be quite a variation on the sold prices even on eBay so I tend to sort of look at the prices go for an average you know try and weigh in post and packing as well so for a big set like that you know probably you see in sets sold for 410 420 430 with post and packing so I sort of look at all the different prices and try and get the best price that I can do on that particular set which is still making me a decent profit as well and also hopefully the person that's buying it thinking they're get, getting quite a good deal as well for that particular set. Now the only downside about that brick bank that was the only one of that set that I'd ever bought. Um, I did buy it originally to open and build as part of my modular collection um, so I've decided to after a while of humming and hawing whether to actually open that and I decided not to, decided to sell it because that's ultimately what I'm here for doing is for Lego investing. I do like to, to build sets occasionally if I really like them. It was okay that that modular bank, it was alright, it wasn't one of my favourites of the modular line so um, a little bit of a difficult decision to let that one go but ultimately it's sold now, it's gone uh, so it, it looks like I probably never will be able to have that particular set unless I buy it second hand or something like that but I probably won't be doing that anytime soon. Um, another set uh, which I was quite pleased about selling was 10242 which was the uh, Mini, Cooper, Mini Cooper even, uh, the creator set. I sell that for £180. Uh, I originally bought that many years ago for £80. I think I had three of those originally uh, and I've sold all three of them now so that was the last one that I had and I think the guy that bought it off me he did say that he'd seen me at a previous Brick Festival uh, with that. I think the last one at Milton Keynes I was at maybe last year. Um, so that was another set that did actually sell uh, and he didn't buy it at the time but lucky for him I had it was the last one that I had that I took to that particular event so I think he was really really pleased to get that so again that was a hundred pound profit for me I'm finding that a lot of these vehicles aren't getting huge profits they're taking a long long time to sort of get up to any kind of decent profit so I'm sort of bearing that in mind now when I'm looking at sets to buy for in the future is I'm probably going to start avoiding a lot of these vehicles or some of the some of the ones I'm on the fence with just because they're really not increasing in value by huge amounts there are better sets out there uh, but still a profit is a profit so I'm pleased with that. <clears throat> um, I also managed to sell 80105 the New Year Temple so this is a set from 2020 so not that old I tend to wait a little bit longer to sell sets but again this was a set that hasn't really been going um, up too much in value so I originally bought this at cost price from the Lego store at £90 and I sold it for £135 so only £45 profit um, but it's around about 50% of, of, of that on profit so it's still not bad uh, but as I say they just the Chinese sets aren't going up that quickly I bought a few of them in the past this is the oldest one that I had so um, again I will probably be buying some more of these but maybe not too many because I don't think they're hugely popular they're Again, there are better sets out there. Um, I also sold another one of my VW campers, 10220. Uh, so this set uh, I bought a long, long time ago. These I bought loads of these sets. I bought 10 of them, I think, at the time, back in about 2012, 2013. And they just stayed on shelves for years. Uh, so they've only just started to uh, go up in value. And I had this on at £145. So I made £65 profit on that one, so that's okay. Uh, but as I say, I've had that set for such a long time. And I think I've still got about four or five of these. I've sold one at every single fair that I've gone to but um, I keep wheeling them out every time I try and get rid of another one so again there is a profit in that one but not a huge amount. Um, I also sold the London bus 10258. Um, I think I, I think I purchased this for around about £100. They were 110 I think to buy at the time. Um, maybe they were £100 and went up in value but I didn't actually have any records of the specific amount that I bought this set for. I wasn't really keeping detail 
sale records at the time, but I do remember that I did get a bit of a discount on this. But even then, I only sold it for 125. Uh, this really is a set that just hasn't increased an awful lot in value. So it was one that I just thought, look, it's a big set. I'll take it to the event. I'm not making much profit. It's only 25 pound profit. Not a great deal on a set. It's only 25 percent profit, so it's really not a huge amount. But um, they're just not going up that much in value. I don't think they're that popular. Again, another vehicle that doesn't do particularly well. Um, and then another one that I sold that hasn't been doing well at all is the 10252, the VW Beetle. Um, I had that on at my last Lego fair for £105 and it just didn't sell. And I bought this for £75. Um, I don't think I got a discount on this one when I bought it. So uh, again, vehicles just don't seem to increase in value very, very quickly or very, very high. So I ended up selling this for £99, which you might think, oh my goodness, Ian, what are you doing selling that off? But say it didn't sell at my last one for a Hundred and five. I thought I'd put the price down a little bit. It was sort of what they sell for on eBay. They're not going for much more than that, if I'm honest. So again, only 25%, 24% profit on this one. Not a great deal, but again, I've managed to free up some space, free up some money. I can buy something else with that money and invest it in something else, hopefully that uh, has better returns. Um, one vehicle that was okay uh, was 30152, the three-in-one vacation getaway. Uh, so I originally, uh, I think the recommended retail price on this set at the time was about 50 or £55, pounds, I seem to remember. Um, I do occasionally buy three-in-one sets. They're not always the most profitable, um, but uh, a lot of them are available on places like Amazon and discounted. So I managed to pick this up, and this was a few years ago, I'm talking probably 2016. 2017 I picked this up for 36 pounds and I sold it for 75 so again not not a huge amount of money I took for that particular set but it's 39 pound profit so more than a hundred percent profit on that particular set it's the only one of that set that I ever got um, I actually quite like the look of that set again it's a set that I quite liked and I thought you know if I like it other people will like it it's taken a few years to, to get to that price you know what's that six or seven years I've had to wait until I can actually uh, sell that on, but yeah, really pleased to, to sell that on. And I think the little lad that got that, he was his eyes sort of lit up when he saw it. I think he'd never seen anything like that before. They've never really done anything of that scale before Lego, so I, I think uh, he was really, really pleased to get that. And again, for £75, I think if you had something like that on the market today, that's probably what Lego would charge for something like that. You know, I've seen a lot of sets, similar as sets with the same amount of pieces that tend to go for that price. So it's just good that I was able to get that for at the time on Amazon for a very, very good discounted price. One other set that I sold was 21317, the Ideas Steamboat Willy. Uh, now, I got a couple of these because I thought they would do better than they actually have done. Uh, I think I paid, paid retail for this at £80. Uh, I sold it for 125 so there is a profit on there. Again, I don't think it's increased as much as I thought it would. I thought because it was Mickey Mouse and Disney, it might have a bit more of appeal. But they did, again, they've, they, they, they've increased a bit, but not huge amounts. So still £45 profit, so still more than 50% profit on that from what I paid for it uh, so yeah managed to sell one of those and again not the hugest box the uh, these idea sets they're a bit of a smaller box from some of the other larger sets I've just talked about so it doesn't take up too much space so that's quite a tidy little profit on that one and the final large set that I took um, was 76193 the Guardian ship uh, this is from Marvel so these this is one of two sets that I bought literally um, over Christmas period just gone 2022 and I got them from Phoenix and when they arrived they had they were obviously sets that had been on their shelves and got a bit of store damage um, this particular box wasn't actually too bad uh, and this set retails don't forget for 150 pounds um, but because of the the discount at the time and I got extra money off it because the box was damaged and I sort of sent a little email saying you know that I was disappointed in the state of their uh, boxes uh, I managed to get that uh, for 56 or 57 pounds 60 um, so sold it for 80 pounds and again I think the person that got that got a really good deal if you're not bothered about boxes then the box actually wasn't that bad. It was just a bit scuffed at the edges, and it just—it wasn't great. It wasn't what I like for boxes. I'm a very, very fussy about my Lego boxes, so um, I was sort of willing to let that one go for a low price. I still made twenty-two pound forty profit, but um, I sold the other Marvel. Um, get a guardianship at my last Lego fair for 75, and I thought, well, this is a slightly better condition box. See if I can sell it for 80. 
and it sold really, really quickly. So very small profit on that one, but there's quite a quick turnaround on that. So I literally only sold them at Christmas time, and what was this, the end of March when I uh, when I did it? So what, three months? Three months, and it's only £20 profit. It's not a great deal, but I got rid of the set. Uh, I'll be looking to buy more of those in the future if they're discounted again, but maybe not buy it from Fenix this time, because the, the, the quality of their larger boxes can be very hit and miss, apparently. Um, so that's all the large sets that I did. Uh, just one quick mention to a set that I was, I took on the off chance that I might sell it, and I did, and I was really pleased I did, and that's the uh, 75254, the ATST Raider. So this is a set which was supposed to retire, I think in 2021, and there was some um, talk over one of the characters and one of the minifigures that um, had fallen out with a TV production company, um, and uh, people thought the minifigure would be rare because they wouldn't be doing any more of that, and then it turns out that it was all a load of nonsense, and then the set didn't retire. So a lot of people bought a lot of these sets. I think I've got about three or four more of them, and most of them I paid full price for, which I think was about 50 to 55 pounds. Um, for whatever reason, this particular set here, I managed to get at a really good discount on, I think I got it from um, Amazon Europe, it was Italy I think I got it from, it came all the way from Italy and I managed to get it for £26.40 uh, which means that my selling price of £48 I was able to be very competitive, I still made £21.60 profit which is probably, what's that in percentage terms, it's probably around about 40% profit um, so uh, just really really pleased to sort of sell one of those I think the lad that got it again was quite pleased with getting it to that price a little bit of very minor box damage on the side but nothing major uh, but yeah at the end of the day it sold I got rid of one of those which is fantastic I've got a few more of those I think I'm gonna have to wait a little bit longer um, because I think the rest of them I paid full price for so it's gonna be a while before I'm gonna be making any kind of profit on those other sets as well so yeah, really, really successful with all of those box sets. I'm just amazed how many of them sold. Um, to start with, when I started the day, I could only obviously fit a certain amount of those sets onto my table. Um, and uh, I thought, I thought, God, a lot, a lot of sets over here. I've got a lot of um, sets I've not been able to put out, um, which I wanted to. I wanted to display as much as I could. But because I was selling things quite quickly, every time something sold. I'd fill the gap on my table with uh, another set that I had round the back. I had a few duplicates as well this time, so a few sets I had more than one of. So if that set sold, I'd put the duplicate set out. Uh, but it was it was good, and it meant that people were sort of going to, going to my store, buying something. I think one guy came back later, and I'd obviously put new stuff out there, and he bought something else. So, you know, people do go around these fairs a few times and have a look. And because I was near the entrance and exit, it meant that I was it was good for me because I was getting getting people as they were coming in and I was getting people as they were leaving as well so it really really worked well for me. So I always like to take quite a few poly bags to these things and um, so I normally take a box of poly bags, I have some spares as well, they don't take a lot of space up, um, some of them are, are priced fairly cheaply um, you know which is one of those things, some of them are a little bit more expensive depending of course on what they are. So in total, now I've got my list here I've sold, oh I only sold to, sold 30 poly bags in total, so not a huge amount of poly bags, I obviously take a lot more than that, uh, but people do like to stop at the stall and have a little bit of a browse through them, which is always quite nice. Um, but uh, yeah, of those 30, there were two which were particularly popular. So I'd actually bought some, or managed to get some bulk orders recently of a couple of sets, uh, which are these two here. So there was the Hogwarts uh, Build Your Own Castle, uh, which is that set there. There, and the Marvel Doctor Strangers Interdimensional Portal. So I got these from uh, Brick a Brack UK. And I think I bought about 30 of these, and but only 10 of these at the time. And both of these sets, um, what I did, as well as having them in my little um, poly bag box that I sort of have on the desk, is I sort of put this in another set as well. I could have had this uh, plastic tower, and I sort of attached them to the tower with the price on, so they were sort of visible to everybody. I thought because they're Marvel and Harry Potter, they'll do quite well, and I wasn't wrong. Um, so I only took, I think, I took 10 of these Marvel sets, which is the, the, the 10 that I had, and I think I took 12 of these Harry Potter. I had one in the box at the front, one on display, and then I had 10 extra as well. So I actually sold eight each of these, um, and I think I was selling these ones for the Harry Potter for £7, and the Marvel ones I was selling for £8. And um, 
Yeah, I sold eight each of them, which doesn't sound a lot, but when you sort of factor in, or oh, you know, eight eggs is you know, sixty-four pounds I made on these, and fifty-six pounds I made on the Harry Potter. Now, obviously, that's not all profit. I did buy these. I was making slightly less. I was making about forty-five, fifty percent ish profit on both of these. So for me, it, it worked out quite well. But they're just sort of nice things to have, and and I quite like getting stuff like this because um, I know I'm making a profit on these. But you know, say like this marble set here. It's only it's not only available, I think, in Target in the U.S. and Canada. So it's not readily available in the U.K. So for me to be able to sort of sell these onto people, sets that they really wouldn't be able to get somewhere else or certainly not easily and again I had a look on Amazon and eBay and these were selling for sort of eight nine ten pounds plus so hopefully I priced them at a good price as well that people were still getting these sets at what they consider to be a reasonable price as well so yeah really really pleased and I think I'll be buying more sort of bulk orders of these kind of poly bags especially some of the licensed ones as well because they just sold really really well and I, and I sort of I got rid of quite a few of those so since then you may have seen in my latest uh, haul I actually ordered more of these Marvel ones I ordered 30 more just because they're, they're really great little poly bags I think these are brilliant and these will do well in the future as well I've still got quite a few of these left for now but they'll sell at further events so really really pleased to sell those so yeah the poly bags did okay not great as I say I only sold around about 30 of them uh, but uh, they did okay. Uh, within the poly bags as well, there were some freebies, so like the, the recent VIP add-on packs that they've been doing. I sold a, a three or four of those, which is quite good. Um, and, and also talking about freebies as well, I took a lot of freebie sets. So these are the sets that I get for free when I buy, um, like gift with purchase from lego.com uh, and, um, and, and things like that. So you quite often see me go to Lego stores, I'll always go in, try and get a decent gift with purchase. Uh, and these just tend to do really, really well. I think it's because they're unusual, they're difficult to get. A lot of time people aren't prepared to spend the whatever it is, the, the 80, 100, 150, 220 pounds sometimes you have to spend to get some of these free gifts. But I tend to get a lot of them because I do sort of bulk bulk orders online and from Lego shops as well. Um, so in total, uh, where are my numbers here? Um, I sold a total of 35 of all of the sets, all of the 76 box sets that I sold, 35 of them were free gifts. They were the sets that I got for free. And of course that means uh, that I'm making sort of a total profit on all of those. Now, uh, some of them were, were quite lowly priced. I think I had them as low as uh, around about nine or ten pounds, a few of them. Um, things like the um, Year of the Rabbit was ten pounds, for example, and the Little Children's Amusement Park I was selling for nine pounds. Uh, most of them sell for sort of around about the twenty to thirty pound mark, which is fantastic. Um, but the three which I managed to sell for the highest price were all Harry Potter sets, believe it or not. So again, it just shows the importance of being able to pick up these sets. Uh, again, you have to be careful when you're buying Harry Potter from lego.com directly and from Lego stores, because a lot of Harry Potter sets, normal sets, are, um, are reduced on other sites like Amazon and other places. So if I do buy Harry Potter sets from the Lego store, I'll try and get the sets that aren't so easily available at other stores and regularly discounted. Um, and again, this is probably why people don't manage to pick up many of these Harry Potter gifts with purchase, is because there, there is generally quite a high spend threshold on these. But I managed to sell um, 40452, the Harry Potter Gryffindor dorm set, now, I actually had this on at my last Lego sale, uh, for last Lego fair, for £65, and it didn't sell, so I reduced the, the price to 58 and it did actually sell at that price. And again, that's a very, very good price for a free gift with purchase for me. £58 is just total profit, so that's, that's actually a really good price for that. And similarly, I had 40577, the Grand Staircase from Harry Potter, and I sold that for £55. Both of those sets, I'm pretty certain, were available last year during 2022 so I've not had to hang on to those long to make decent profits on either of those um, and I also had 40412 which was the Brickheads, um, Hagrid and Bookbeak I think that was from 2021 so a couple of years ago but
but I managed to sell that for £42. So some really, really um, decent prices on some of those Harry Potter sets. So, you know, if you are a Lego investor or somebody that likes to sort of um, maybe sell on these sort of sets, just keep an eye out for these Harry Potter ones in future because they, they are very, very, um, very, very sought after very collectible and they do tend to um, go for a higher price but as I say even the regular uh, gifts of purchase some of the ones that they do I managed to sell like the um, the Forestman um, promo that they had last year I was selling that for £32 I think and the uh, the Blacktron I think I sold a couple of those for £27 each uh, and there are other ones as well uh, that, that, uh, that come out at a similar price so yeah keep an eye out for those promos I always swear by them and yes you have to spend money at Lego to be able to do that but if you get in two or three promos when you go into the Lego store or online, uh, and of course you get your VIP points as well, which is basically 5% off your total purchase, it's definitely worth getting these promos. They do sell very, very well at these Lego fairs. I've been to, say, three or four of these now, and each time I go, most of my promos will sell. Uh, and again, that's probably down to me, A, getting the prices right, so I'm not overcharging for them, um, but also, you know, they're, they're just sought after because they're unusual, they're rare and slightly harder to get hold of. So that's pretty much everything. Um, I hope you enjoyed my roundup. I know it's sort of me sat here rambling on for 15-20 uh, minutes or so. Uh, so thank you very much if you got to the end of this video. Um, if you are uh, somebody that likes to do this kind of thing, um, uh, and you've got you've got a enough sets to take with you so I would always suggest having a decent stock you can see here that I took you know nearly a hundred box sets of varying sizes and a load of poly bags as well so you've got to be able to have enough sets to be able to sell at these things but for me it works really really well I sort of I suppose specialize in uh, sealed um, new boxes uh, sealed sets that's kind of what I do and it works for me I like to do that I like to keep the boxes in good condition price them up hopefully reasonably priced as well uh, and and for me it kind of works I am able to sell these sets and make make a decent profit on them which is what it's all about and because a lot of money that I make at these things I will sort of reinvest into Lego for the future to do other things as well but it also just sort of helps me with other things as well it's obviously my little little way of making a little bit of extra pocket money for myself and I have to say I do really enjoy going to these events um, I'm starting to get recognized a lot more at these events than I used to certainly the first one I went to I think one person or two people said oh you're Ian's Bricks and this time there was like about 15 people that sort of came up and said hello and had a couple of selfies and things which I which is always a little bit odd but it's very very nice I don't I don't mind to do that kind of thing at all I sort of get that people sort of see you on YouTube and recognize you um, which is also which is also very very nice as well and have a bit of a chat as well so I don't mind doing that so if ever you see me at one of these Lego fairs do come up and say hello I don't bite <laughs> and uh, it's always really nice to have a chat to people I may not be able to chat for too long because obviously on a busy stall you're trying to sell stuff as well but it's uh, it's always really really nice for people that do come up and say hello even if you say oh watch your youtube channel uh, which is really really good really really kind of everybody um so yeah i will be doing more of these brick festivals in the future um if you do have stuff to either display or to sell brick festivals is a very very good place to do it in my opinion i think the prices of the tables is reasonable um, they're normally very well organised, um, very well uh, advertised, so you get a lot of people through the doors. And over the last year or so, I think within 2023, they've introduced loads of new different venues in and around the UK, from sort of Plymouth in the south up to Carlisle in the north. I think there may even be one in Scotland somewhere as well, over to Wales uh, um, in, the, in the west and over to sort of Kent in the east and Norwich as well. So they're literally all over the country. So wherever you are in the UK, do have a look at the Brick Festival website because even if you're just going to sort of take part in the event and as a, as a sort of a punter going round, you know, do check these out because they're really, really good events. Uh, they have some displays on. Although I did see a lot of people saying there weren't that many displays in the in the latest Milton Keynes one. So if you are a displayer, you know, maybe that's a good opportunity if you go to these things and display some of the models and things that you've been building. I, I know the Brick Festival people are always looking for those kind of people as well to display uh, some of 
of their fabulous models that they they sort of uh, create themselves. So uh, yeah, it, it's not all about just people like myself who have little shops and sell. But uh, I do enjoy going to these things. I think there's an inner shopkeeper somewhere hidden away inside me that sort of comes out at these events and and really sort of enjoys taking part. They're very long days. I mean, for me, Milton Keynes is a long drive. It's two and a half hours each way, so it's a long drive for me, but definitely worth it. Uh, and as I say, I had a very very successful day and a day that I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed even though at the end of it I was absolutely shattered but uh, you know at the end of the day you get home and put all your stuff away and think ah, I've had a really good day there I managed to sell lots of Lego sets and uh, hopefully you know everybody that, that gets the sets are really happy with the sets that they've got as well anyway that's it for now I'll stop talking uh, thank you very much for watching this video it's much appreciated thank you to all the people that like comment and subscribe to my channel uh, that's always much appreciated as well uh, but until next time we'll see you see you in the next video which will be soon thank you very much for watching take care bye for now